Hey, what's up, y'all? This is M. Govier bringing y'all episode three of my Cleveland Fantasy Draft Association. And there's the starting lineups right there. Phoenix had Kirk Heinrich, Daywan Blair, and those are pretty much the biggest, the two biggest difference makers in this game. Daywan Blair is really good at post moves and rebounding. I think his rebounding is an A minus. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. And this game is coming off of a back to back for me. This is the second game in a back to back, I mean, and this is just a really difficult game away from home. The Phoenix Suns were 4 and 1 coming into this game. I was 1 and 2 if I'm not mistaken. And this is just a very a very difficult game. Actually, I was I was 1 and 1 looking to go 2 and 1. And Evan Turner gets that easy double screen top of the key layup. And I'm just kind of not playing that great of defense, getting a little frustrated in the in the first quarter. And Marshawn Brooks getting his own rebound in the foul. Marshawn Brooks is a, a really, really good player in this game. There's really nothing he's not good at offensively, kind of like a Manu Ginobili type player. He's really good in the post for fadeaways and stuff like that. Really good mid-range, really good from close. And his three-pointer is, is fine. Second quarter off the screen, that shot by Marshawn Brooks. And a funny, a funny story about Marshawn Brooks. He actually went to my high school in Georgia, Tucker High School. And I remember in seventh grade, I think it was, I went to the my high school's state basketball finals. Yeah, it was in 2007, so I was in seventh grade. And it was at the Gwinnett, uh, Gwinnett Center Arena. And Marshawn Brooks was a senior that year, and we actually won state. So I saw him play as a senior in high school. And I did not know that he was going to be this good. But I remember that we beat Columbia, and Columbia had beaten us earlier in the year. And it was a big deal, but anyways... Now they're here and over there. Ray Allen hits that three right there. Marshawn Brooks getting the rip. I mean, it is it is kind of kind of here or there because this guy slick went off this game. You'll see as as the game progresses. Ray Allen with the up fake, and Ray Allen was just struggling with his shot all game. As you'll see another miss right here with the green release. So other players had to step up, and Marshawn Brooks is my other really good shooting guard. So he stepped up. He was ready to get his rebound again, not too confident in his shot, but he actually knocked it down that time. So going into halftime, Marshawn Brooks is leading me in scoring with 13 points. Kevin Durant, I forgot Kevin Durant, it wasn't just Kirk Heinrich and Dewan Blair. Kevin Durant is their main difference maker, but to be honest, Kevin Durant didn't score as much as I thought he would, and he just didn't have a, a huge game. And Ray Allen still struggling with, it, with his shot, but Kawhi Leonard's there to clean it up on the putback slam. When, when one of your really good players is struggling, you, you count on your role players and X-Factor type players to step up. And I really think that against uh, that other, in the other game, the last game where I went to overtime, Omer Sheik was kind of that X-Factor player. And I'm going to have a counter in the top left corner of the screen with how many points Marshawn Brooks scores this quarter. He just hit a three-pointer. And this is all starting from like five minutes to go in the third quarter. Keep that in mind. So Marshawn Brooks has three points right there. Here he goes off the. He gets his. He gets the rebound. Drives in five points, and he has 20 points so far. He's gonna miss that free throw, so I'm not gonna show it or count it on the counter. Marshawn Brooks gets the rebound. He's gonna go coast to coast again. No, no. If I'm not mistaken, no, he doesn't. But he gets the re, he gets the um, pass from Collison and one seven points. I mean, th this kid is ridiculous. His drive, his three pointer, everything is ridiculous. Doesn't get to make that layup, so I'm not going to count that on the counter. But he gets fouled again, so he's going to get two more free throws at the line. Go ahead and make that eight points. Splash. His free throw is pretty wet, except those two n ones I missed. And those N ones that I missed were kind of crucial because they could have really been momentum changers away from home. You look for N ones and plays like that to kind of take the momentum when you're playing away from home. And I, I wasn't able to capitalize. But Marshawn Brooks from three showing you some range. The rookie. And he's on fire right now. And I'm just going to a little bit of a heat check right here. And he makes it. Splash. 15 points. In what is it? Three minutes? Four minutes? I mean, he's just going off. I get the, the steal off the oop attempt. And I'm going to take it coast to coast again. I'm going to miss the, the shot. But I'm going to hit that first free throw. 
And I'm going to dap my players up looking like a freaking animal. And I'm going to take the whole time to, to you know, just admire his free throw. His beautiful three free throw routine splash. 17 points for Marshawn Brooks in the third quarter. Just ridiculous. He just absolutely went off. And he pretty much single-handedly kept me in this game with Ray Allen struggling. Kevin Love kind of struggling. Nobody was really stepping up except Marshawn Brooks. And they're playing the ball to Kevin Durant. This is where... um. They kind of pick it up right here. Kevin Durant with the three-pointer. This is where Kevin Durant really picks it up. They go on a, a little bit of a run to get themselves back in the game. And Marshawn Brooks really wasn't able to continue what he what he did in the third quarter. If he did, that would have been a, a seriously a special performance. That would have, he probably would have finished with like 45, 50 points. That would have been a, a special game to upload, considering it's not my player and where the, they score 50 points all the time. But... Anyways, here we go. Kirk Heinrich dribbling the ball up the court. They're looking for the lead, and Ryan Anderson makes no mistake. He hits that three-pointer, forcing me to give up the lead. And Marshawn Brooks still struggling from the field with Ray Allen struggling. It's just, it was really hard for me to find. I get the rip right there, but I wasn't able to capitalize. But this game was just really hard for me to find some consistent offense besides that third-quarter stretch with Marshawn. And I actually ended up taking the lead at that point, except... I couldn't keep it going. It's really hard to be consistent scoring and num scoring in, in bunches like that. And Marshawn wasn't able to hit that shot either, so he's really starting to struggle this quarter. He doesn't actually get the cold bar, but he's just struggling overall. And Ray Allen off the screen, still struggling with his shot as well. There's really not much that you can do when your whole team's struggling like that. And of course, I missed the other shot. So really nothing's going my way this game at the end. So I have to foul you know, forced to foul or whatever, but honestly, even though I lost this game, the the amount of points that Marshawn Brooks had was a huge plus. And it was it was a it was a serious bright spot. And there's his his final stat line, 38 points, seven rebounds, two steals. So even though I lost, I'm able to take away the positive that Marshawn Brooks is a is really a key player coming off the bench. And he's really given Kawhi Leonard a run for his money for the starting lineup. So tell me what you think in the comments. Who you think should start Marshawn Brooks, Kawhi Leonard, Ray Allen, you know. I'm willing to do what y'all want to see. So just leave in the comments who you think should start for who. And I'll definitely give that a try and see what happens. I think that Marshawn Brooks had a, a serious breakout game this game. And I actually got rid of Chris Humphreys because he wasn't really producing that much for me. I gave up a first round pick in 2013, but I got a first round pick from the Pacers. And I got Tyrus Thomas, an A minus potential. Expect exciting things to come from this. Tyrus Thomas being the explosive power forward. And, anyways, thanks for watching, y'all. Stay tuned for my next episodes. Stay lavish. Peace.